If you are remotely concerned with your Wii U's NAND chip failing, then you need to watch this video fully. I'm making this video to remind or enlighten those of you who found out you have a Hynix chip in your Wii U. Seriously guys, it's not the end of the world if you have it, and I'll go over a way to prevent having your beloved Wii U brick itself or at least a means of being able to fix it if it does. And there's also a new tip to find out if your Wii U is safe from the Hynix chip without turning it on that I found out after uploading the last video, so stick around to the end of this video to hear that. And for those of you in the comments who didn't watch my previous video all the way through yesterday, powering your Wii U won't fix or prevent anything, so there's no need to stress if it's plugged in or not. So obviously this is a follow-up video after releasing my previous video about the bad Wii U NAND chip. That one went kind of crazy. I mean 20,000 views in two days and over 500 comments? That's insane, and that's a lot of comments. I apologize if I can't reply to all of them. I try, but I do have a full-time job outside of YouTube, so sadly, I don't have all the free time in the world. But let's cut to the chase. If you found out you have a Hynix chip, and you're concerned about your Wii U getting the NAND failure brick, the 160-103, you should install ISFS hacks for peace of mind, which I did mention in the previous video, but I didn't go in depth about what it was, and a lot of you just clicked off before that point too and it's probably something you should know about i'm going to link the written guide right here to install it to your wii u if that's something you are going to choose to do and if you're not worried about it then you don't have to do anything but a huge shout out goes to jan hoffmeyer i really hope i'm saying your name correctly but he is the creator of this program and he was in the comments of the previous video and if i missed anything that you would like to add about the software or the Hynix chip issue in general i'll pin your comment so everyone can See. He plans on making the process of installing ISFS hacks easier in the future, so if you would like to wait until it's updated, then you can do that. Also, credits to everyone here on the screen as they were also a part of this project. I also want to remind everyone that I do not create the software that I show in my videos. I am clearly not skilled in software development. Think of me like a teacher, and just like a teacher shows you how to do math, they themselves did not create the equations or write the textbooks, but they are there to help you learn, as am I. So let's learn. At this point, you're probably wondering what the heck is ISFS hacks and you know what let's just call it ISFA hacks but basically this is a program that gives you the ability to run red NAND before your console loads into the Wii U menu. Red NAND stands for redirect NAND. To put it simply you can look at it as being comparable to boot me that we have on the original Wii for brick protection. Because it can run first upon booting your system, it gives you the ability to prepare most types of bricks. And as I mentioned before, this written guide is linked in the description if you're interested in setting it up for yourself. I've actually gone and set it up on one of my Wii U's just so I could learn more about it. And just to be clear, it's not limited to Red NAND. ISFA Hacks has many more perks that can be extremely useful, including rebuilding or upgrading the MLC, brick protection, and even USB partitioning, to name a few. Also, if you're curious, ISFS abbreviation is Nintendo's file system for the SLC and no one knows exactly what IS stands for but the FS stands for file system. Now if you're hoping for a video guide on how to install this program I apologize but this is not going to be one mainly because the creator says there will be a big update soon and I know a lot of you prefer video guides and that's okay but if you take things slow read all the steps you'll be fine with the written one. If you need help feel free to join my homebrew help discord server where there are some very talented helpers who could potentially give you a Hand. But remember, they don't have to, so be respectful if you're asking for help. In combination to ISFA hacks, you can also regularly back up your save data using the Save Me Homebrew app, which I do have a video on. That way, no matter what happens to your Wii U, you'll always have your latest Save Me backup so that you at least don't lose your save data. And you can continue where you left off after either fixing your console, getting a new one, or even setting it up on Simu Emulator. But honestly, guys, the Hynix NAND failing is really complicated. You can tell by the huge conversation I had with Jan on Discord. He seriously knows a lot and is clearly very talented in this area of modding. And also a good trick when it comes to your Wii U bricking is that the rule is basically if, if your console can display something, even just the Wii U logo, and the firmware is 5.5.0 or newer, which you should have if you followed my homebrew guides as you want to be on the latest, then it can be fixed without soldering, which is a good thing. Because I don't know about you guys, but I don't know how to solder. I would love to learn, but I don't want to be forced to because my Wii U is big. And before I forget, there's one more trick to telling what chip you have without even turning your console on. So along with looking to see if your ports are colored or not in the back, 
if you take your SD card out, there is a number right here. If it's a 40 or a 50, then you will not have a Hynix. Shout out to Callium and Shia for bringing that to my attention as well as for helping me prep this video. And of course, thanks again to Jan Hoffmeyer for the help as well. Stay funky and happy modding. <laughs>